Welcome to Bites and Sips. It's Friday again, a time when we can take a few minutes to just look into the Word of God, enjoy a bite of it, some few verses, and then of course enjoy a drink or two. I've got my uh, cup of uh, dawa here and uh, you get yourself something ready to some water if that be your delight let us share the word of God so a recap on our last session we looked in more detail at Sarah's laughter and we contrasted it with Abraham's laughter I don't know whether there are promises that God has brought your way that made you laugh from unbelief may it not be so again so today we continue again with the same chapter genesis chapter 18 so get your bible ready and let's move to genesis chapter 18 verse 22 to verse 33 and i'm reading from the niv version this is what it says verse 22 to 33 some 10 verses the man turned away and went toward Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of 50 righteous people in it? Verse 25, far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, will not the judge of all the earth do right? Verse 26, the Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I'm nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to him. What if only 40 are found there? He said, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Verse 31, Abraham said, now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. Verse 33, when the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. Wow, a lot of numbers today. Today's title, Cancel with the Lord. And Abraham came near. Abraham came near to the Lord. Effective intercession is a matter of drawing near to God so that we can pray. So that, you know, he drew near to God so that he could pray with his heart. We draw near to God so that we can draw near and pray with our hearts. Today, we are reading that God talks to himself. Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Amos 3, 7 says this, Certainly the sovereign Lord does nothing without first revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The prophets are shown things to come. So God, the Lord God is talking to himself and saying, will I do this thing without alerting my friend Abraham? And we have seen that it is a pattern that God does not do without alerting his prophets. So God says, I won't keep this from Abraham for two reasons. First, because Abraham has been given a favored position in God's sight by grace. He is the man whom God called out to become great. Through him, all the nations of the earth were blessed. And second, I have chosen him in order that he might charge his household to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. That was God giving his reason for calling out Abraham. God comes into his life to show him how to do this. 
And so because he has been taught by grace how to walk before God, this is the man to whom God wants to tell his secrets. That sounds like a position you and I need to desire to have. A position that is near God, favored of God by his grace, so that God is able to reveal even to us, even to you and me, his secrets. So Abraham is made the depository of God's thoughts and counsels about Sodom. How is that? We read in verse 23, Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Again, we are meeting the same words that Abraham drew near, approached the Lord. He approached nearer to him to have more close and intimate conversation with him on the subject of the destruction of Sodom. This is to be perceived as drawing near to God in prayer. I don't know how your prayer life is like. How are you drawing near to God? It is only through prayer that you and I can draw near to God. And Abraham does not hesitate. He draws near and positions himself. And that is why a deposit is made into him. He drew near with faith. And also with the freedom and a holy boldness and confidence. And yet with great reverence of the divine majesty. And in all humility, you know, under a deep sense of his unworthiness. Because you, we've read how, you know, he approaches, you know, forbid, you know, I have come again. You know, forgive me again, I'm asking. You know, a lot of humility, but drawing near with confidence and relenting. The way to know the divine purposes about this present evil world is not to be mixed up with it in its schemes and speculations, but to be entirely separated from it and be drawn nearer to God. That's the position you and I are called to take. The more closely we walk with God and the more Subject we are to his word, the more we shall know of his mind about everything. God's word reveals all we need to know. In its pure and sanctifying pages, we learn all about the character, the course, and the destiny of the world. Draw near to God by reading his word and his revelation becomes yours too. In our country, we have had several occasions of people who have claimed to be prophets, but their behavior has denied them the status accorded to one who has counsel with God. One who has counsel with God must know the principle of God revealed in God's character and in his doings. Abraham knows the principle. Abraham knows the principle. God does not treat the righteous as he does the unrighteous, the wicked. Knowing this then, Abraham was able to intercede and he was then able to go to and fro on the numbers. Suppose there were five less than the 50 righteous. To suppose there were only 10. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the principle is established. God will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. Now, it is just a matter of numbers. How many righteous people will God spare the city for? That's the other detail. But the principle remains. You know, principles do not change, but processes change. The ways, the methods change, but principles do not change. And for Abraham, he knew the principle that God will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. So notice that one, Abraham's intercession was effective. Why? Because it was specific. He talked about specific numbers with God, not in broad general terms. 
often our prayers are ineffective because we really don't ask the Lord to do anything. You know, instead, we often just toss wishes up to heaven and, you know, we don't get to the heart of the matter. Secondly, Abraham must know for he's a friend and a favorite and one that God has a particular kindness for and great things in store for. He knows. Notice also, thirdly, that Abraham's full humility and demonstrated compassion for others. You know, the Sodomites, he's here pleading on behalf of the Sodomites, a people so sinful that a cry had gone up to the Lord concerning them. He intercedes for them. This is what you and I should do. Be specific in prayer. Be confident that we are loved enough to approach and open our hearts to him. And when we do, to remember others. Indeed, there's a lot more to pray for others' needs. Psalm 25, 14 says this, The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. Those who by faith live a life of communion with God cannot but know more of his mind than other people. You want to know more of God's mind? Spend time before his presence. Prayer in the word, reading the word and prayer. That's how we download the mind of God in us. Such people have a better insight than others into what is present and a better foresight of what is to come, at least so much as suffices for their guidance and for their comfort. And I would want to be one as such. God determined to destroy the cities, but Abraham asked God to withhold his judgment if ten righteous people could be found. But unfortunately, Ten righteous people could not be found and the two cities were destroyed, as we will read later. Lot and his family, however, escaped before the judgment fell. Friend, God's counsel is revealed in his word. God's counsel, I repeat that, is revealed in his word. How near or close are you to his word? How are you receiving it and what are you doing with it? Are you obedient and humble? Are you acting on it? Intercession for those whom God's wrath is upon. Are you acting on the word of God to intercede both for yourself and for the rest? What are you doing with the word of God? I pray that we would be like our father Abraham. Yet he is in the world, yet not of the world. He is able to perceive things that would happen and then take an action. He's a guy who is in the world, but not of it. And that's what we are called to be, that we are in this world, but we don't belong here. He drew near to God in order to know and understand his counsel. The counsel of the Lord, there's no other shortcut. We have to draw near to him in, a, in order to understand his counsel. So I want to pray with us that we will be more careful to listen and to draw near first and listen to God's counsel. We draw near through prayer, through the reading of the word of God, and then to listen so that we can understand his counsel. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, forgive us for the times we have not drawn near. We have desired to just do things our way in our own thinking but we ask for your forgiveness and now we draw near to you lord asking that you would uh, grant us the grace to draw near to you through prayer and through your word grant us the passion and the discipline to adhere to our times of prayer our moments of reading the word that we shall not overlook that because it is in such moments that you download your counsel to us so we pray lord that will help us to be more disciplined that will help our hearts to be more uh, receptive to your word that lord almighty as you download in us lord will be able to behave as we should with that counsel we thank you and we honor you 
And friend, if you're there and you have not yet said yes to the Lord, you don't even understand what is this counsel we are talking about. It begins by saying yes to the Lord. And I'll never want to end our show without asking us to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse me and wash me and write my name in your book of life. I invite you as my Lord and Savior from this day henceforth. I desire no more of my old life, but I want a new life in you. Thank you for your promise and thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, friend, heaven rejoices and so do we that you have given your life to the Most High God. God bless you. And let's meet again next Friday, same time on Bites and Sips. Hallelujah.